Hello everyone, my name is Ismail Abulaymoun. This will be a board review series for rheumatologic diseases, whether you are taking uh, Yosemite exams as well as internal medicine board review. In addition to some practical points that should help you if you are doing a rheumatology rotation to understand what lab test needed and how to approach patients in addition to the management that we are giving or treat patients. So I tried to divide the topics into small to the point videos so anyone can just focus on some topics that they are weak on as well as I wanted to make it short because I know most people like videos to be short to the point not wasting a lot of time on some mechanisms and some details that you don't need to know. So in total they are going to be around three hours and you can basically finish it in one day if you work on it. So the first few videos including this one will be introduction to the rheumatology as well as some general information that will help you understand and absorb the information when we talk about the different diseases and how we approach them and diagnose them. So we'll start with joint anatomy as well as approach or general approach to joint disease. So let's take an example of joint, synovial joint. And there are, there's the capsule surrounding the joint and composed of two layers. The outer layer is the fibrous tissue and the inner layer is the synovial tissue. Now also there's the cartilage that lines the bone from inside. And this is the hyaline cartilage. And the synovial fluid which is composed mainly of the hyaluronic acid. Now the hyaluronic acid main function is to give viscosity to the synovial fluid. So based on the anatomy we mentioned above, you can um, divide the joint into articular and non-articular parts. Why this is important? Because the pain the patient describes will be different. In articular diseases, the pain will be more diffuse and deep. While in the non-articular diseases, like the skin and bone, it will be more localized. And when you examine the patient, there will be point tenderness. It's also important to remember that there is a moderator between the articular and the non-articular parts, which is called the bursa. Now we can divide the articular disease into two main sections. First section is the inflammatory articular diseases. And the sec second section is the non-inflammatory articular diseases. Now the inflammatory since we are talking about inflammation, we will have systemic symptoms and constitutional symptoms as well. And also in the joint itself, we will have the swelling and tenderness on examination. Then on the labs, we will have increased white count and also increased inflammatory markers, CRP and DSR. Examples include rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, spondyloarthropathies, gout, etc. Now, talking about the non-inflammatory articular diseases, these people will not have any systemic symptoms because there is no inflammation and also there will be no swelling or tenderness on examination. The reason there is no active inflammation in the joint. Now, in the labs, they will have normal white count and normal inflammatory markers. And the main two examples are osteoarthritis and hemochromatosis erythropathy. And this is it for the introduction. See you in the next one.